everyone, my name is Grace Wells and welcome to Adobe's YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to create this simple kaleidoscope effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. And my favorite thing about this effect is not only is it really easy to execute, it's also super customizable. You can really make this as intricate as you want. That's just kind of a running theme with Adobe Premiere Pro and it's why it's my favorite video editor I've ever used. The possibilities are endless, but yet they still feel very accessible, which ultimately allows you to both work faster and to stand out. So like many other visual effects, the first and probably the most important step is going to be capturing a video clip that this effect will work with. Because specifically what's gonna make this effect really look like a kaleidoscope is going to be having a subject which is spinning. So you're gonna have to capture that in camera. You're gonna have to have a subject which is spinning. Because when you think about it, if you have a kaleidoscope and you hold it up to your eye, um, yeah, it looks pretty cool to look through it, but you don't really get that kaleidoscope movement, that kaleidoscope visual until you start spinning the kaleidoscope. So in that same way, we're gonna have to have a spinning subject to really solidify this kaleidoscope effect. So the video clip that I'm gonna be using today is from my latest TikTok random commercial. It is a commercial for a rock. And the way that I captured this video clip was very easy. I basically just put a rock on a surface. I put a turntable underneath it. I actually poured a little bit of water onto the surface itself, um, just because I know that that's gonna create a little bit more dimension in my kaleidoscope. There's gonna be reflections, there's gonna be highlights on that water. So I just wanted to add like a little extra layer to my kaleidoscope. Um, and then I spun it and I got my video clip. And that is the video clip we're gonna be working with today. So once you've dragged your video clip with your spinning subject into your timeline, you're just gonna open the effects panel and search for the mirror effect because that's all this kaleidoscope effect really is at the end of the day. It's just a series of mirrored reflections. Um, and the number of mirror effects that you apply to your video clip is really gonna depend on how intricate you want your kaleidoscope to be. Because obviously the more times you mirror it, the more times you distort it, um, the more complicated and intricate it's going to get. You can either create a super detailed, intricate kaleidoscope that looks a lot like a kaleidoscope when you hold it up to your eye, or you can create something more simple where you can still recognize the object for what it is. Um, so in this case, you can still see that it is a rock. There's just a little bit more of added complexity to it. I would recommend starting off with three mirror effects, um, just because there's so much that you can do with just three. And then if you decide later that you need a little bit more added intricacy, you can add more mirror effects to it. So we're just gonna start by adding three mirror effects to our video clip. And you'll see that under each mirror effect, there are two variables that we can change. So there's the reflection center and the reflection angle. Don't get too intimidated by the geometry of it. Um, it's good if you understand it, but if you don't, it's also like not the end of the world. The reflection center is the point on which your image is going to reflect over. And the reflection angle is the angle at which it's going to reflect over. That sounds obvious, but it's not quite so obvious when you get into it. It starts to get a little confusing. Um, so if you click on the reflection center for this top mirror effect, for example, you can see that the reflection center is all the way off to the right outside of the frame. And that's why we can't actually see a reflection in here just yet. The reflection of our rock is actually out of frame right now because it's flipped onto the other side of that reflection center. So we're gonna have to change that in order to get our reflection reflection to come into frame. So I'm just gonna move all my reflection centers to the center of my frame to start off with, and then we'll go from there. It doesn't have to be totally exact when it comes to finding the center of the frame. You can just kind of ballpark it visually, but you'll notice that once you get closer to your object, you're gonna get more overlap between your reflection and the object itself. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just gonna quickly change the rest of our mirrors to have the same center. So we have all of our mirrors um, with the same reflection center right at the middle of the frame. Um, and now it's gonna be a good time to talk about reflection angle. So the reflection angle of zero is gonna be a horizontal reflection. That's what we're seeing right now. What I would recommend doing, no matter how intricate or detailed you want your kaleidoscope to be, um, just as a base is you're gonna have one mirror that is your horizontal reflection. So we already have that, that's our zero degrees. And then one, which is a vertical reflection. That's gonna be negative 90 degrees or 270, depending on how you look at it. They're both the same. So I'm just gonna put negative 90 for this second mirror and it is going to reflect vertically. I want this to feel um, more centered and framed, so I'm just gonna move the position here. So it's pretty cool, but it's a little bit simplistic. So first I wanna show you how you might approach this if you wanna make it truly like a kaleidoscope um, and not have that rock be super recognizable. Our horizontal reflections are kind of merging and melding, but the vertical reflections are still separated. So we wanna bring those closer together. So you're gonna do that by changing the Y axis of the vertical reflection. So if we just move this down, you can see it's gonna to start to converge. 
Again, I'm just gonna move the position to adjust this. Just by changing that vertical reflection center on the y-axis, we've now created a circle with our rock in the center with all of this like converging and melding and molding. And it's really starting to look like a kaleidoscope and less like a rock. We can hardly even distinguish the fact that this is a rock now. You're gonna wanna drag your final mirror layer to the top of where all your mirror layers are because these mirrors are actually created um, in sequential order from bottom to top so you want this final mirror layer to reflect everything you've done so far for this third reflection angle i would recommend trying increments of 30 or 45 degrees just because when you think of a circle it's kind of split up into those 30 or 45 degree parts and depending on what angle you choose this is going to look totally different so let me just show you if i change this reflection angle to 30 that's just added like a whole other dimension to our kaleidoscope. It's really starting to look super cool. If I change this to 45, you're gonna see what a big difference this makes. So if I change this to 45, totally different. We've got a much more like rectangular, almost square look, because if you think about, um, you know, where the 45 degrees lie on the circle, it's kind of in a square formation. Um, so it's gonna look a lot more square if you'd use 45 degrees as opposed to circular. I'm gonna go back to 30 just cause I want this to look circular. So there you go, you have a kaleidoscope effect. And this is an example of a more intricate effect where you can't recognize the object um, but it looks really stylized and it still pulls in that color palette. It could be a really cool effect um, to pop into one of your videos, even as a backdrop, if you wanted to isolate your subject and put it on top of this, that could be super cool as well. But what if you want a kaleidoscope like mine in my rock video, where the object is still very much distinguishable and you can still tell that it is a rock. So first things first, again, I'm going to drag my horizontal reflection center towards the middle of the frame just to bring that reflection in. But I'm not gonna drag it quite so close to my rock in the center because I don't want them to overlap. I want them to still be distinguishable as rocks. And then again, if this makes your frame wonky because your reflection is all the way off to one side like it is right now, just go back to your position and adjust the position of the object so that it's centered. Unlike in our last example, because of the lack of overlap, we can really see the two separate rocks. We're gonna do the same thing again for our vertical. So I'm gonna change this to negative 90 to get a vertical effect. And unlike in our last example, I am not going to have these come together and merge toward the center. I wanna keep them separate. So I'm actually going to adjust this in the other direction so that these rocks actually move further apart from each other. So we've got both a horizontal and a vertical reflection just as we did before, but because the rocks are not overlapping, because we've kind of strategically placed our reflection centers, we have four individual rocks as opposed to this kind of conglomerate in the center. Um, and it's a very different visual impact. And then for our final mirror effect, again, I wanna fill this negative space on the sides. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna bring my reflection center towards the middle. I'm actually gonna bring the vertical axis rather than bringing it to the center, I'm going to bring it down a little bit um, because I want it to almost be centered on the negative space that I'm trying to fill rather than the centralized space. And then I'm just gonna play around with this reflection angle. I wanna go further and further until it's no longer overlapping my central subject but it's still filling that negative space. So I think right around here looks pretty cool. I might bring the vertical axis a little bit down just so it's a little bit farther away from my centralized subjects. And then you can see again what I was saying about the um, stacking of the mirror effects. Because this is all the way at the bottom, it's being applied first. So it's only being applied to that original video clip and not to the entire video clip. So I'm just gonna drag that last mirror all the way to the top on top of my other mirrors. And now it's going to reflect vertical and the horizontal before it reflects these negative space filling reflections. Therefore, it's gonna fill all four corners. And so that's how we arrive at the kaleidoscope effect that I end up using in my final video, which is this one that's kind of stylized and more distinguishable. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you get to use this effect in one of your videos. It's really fun to play around with. Feel free to hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this from Adobe. And if you wanna find me on social media, my handle is at Grace Wells Photo on TikTok and Instagram, and I am Grace Wells here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.